Welcome to my home away from home. Ooh. Hi, I'm Mia Saini, host of NBA Pod TV. I'm standing in front of Baker Library here at Harvard Business School. Now, most of you know I'm a second year MBA student, and today I share with you what makes this place so unique. Join me as I take you behind the scenes as I interview my friends who share with you their tips and their strategies in securing their candidacy. In addition, I interview Jeremy Scheinwald, the founder and president of MBA Mission. His company has worked with many candidates across the world. So join us as we show you how to get into Harvard Business School. If there are two words that are maybe synonymous with HBS, they're um, the case method and general management. And I think that um, general management is is a is an approach to learning that says that all business problems are interconnected. You can't have something that's exclusively a finance problem or exclusively a marketing problem. You know, all all uh, all aspects of a business problem affect all different aspects of a business. And so, um, so you know, I, I think that HBS is, has modeled itself as a general management school. But that said. In the last couple of years, almost about 50% of, uh, of all students have gone to the finance field, and I think about 25% have gone to consulting. And so, you know, while the general, while the general, the general, general management philosophy underpinning the education, and uh, and maybe underpinning the decisions of those in those fields, overwhelmingly students are gravitating towards a few narrow professions. Now, as Jeremy mentioned, having a general management degree doesn't prevent you from entering a specialized concentration upon graduation. Harvard's emphasis is on general management. In the first year, everyone takes required courses, and in the second year, all electives. Now, this differs from other MBA programs in that you don't have to specialize in one specific field. We spoke to Hilary Kaplan Samorjai, HBS Class of 1996 and Harvard Business School Admissions Board member. She told us why Harvard places such an emphasis on the general management program. At HBS, we offer the general management degree because we feel that it gives students the most flexibility in their career. We're looking long term and we think the general management degree will allow you to do what you want when you want it in your long career. Now we hear a lot about the right fit for a school and it's true. Identifying which school is the right fit for you is extremely important. HBS cares a lot about making sure that each student that comes to campus is the right fit for this university. One of the most important things, uh, one of my uh, kind of friends and, and also uh, you know guy that I look, look to for a lot of advice, um, he helped me talk to a lot of people. Uh, he'd gone to HBS, talked to a lot of people from HBS, and then I did that at some of the other schools I was looking at. Um, and you know, through talking to people, you, you just get a sense of what their experience was like. And while any one individual experience isn't representative of the whole school, mm -hmm. when you get a few of those, you try to put yourself into that into the position and figure out if that's something you're looking for out of an MBA. I'm one of those crazy people who applies to business school out of college. Um, so I actually didn't know what an MBA was until I was a junior in college. I was volunteering at a nonprofit, and the executive director said, you seem really business-minded. You might want to think about business school. And I literally like sat down on my break and Googled, what is an MBA? <laughs> and I saw you know, Harvard Business School popped up, and it said, do you want to change the world? Are you a leader? Do you want to affect people? And I was like, yes, I want to do all those things. When I came to HBS, uh, there was just something about the people that really compelled me to be here. They were just, they were fascinating people. They had such interesting stories. They had so much to share and they were all um, learning from each other and having these incredibly dynamic conversations. And I just so wanted to be a part of it. Now, one of the main reasons I chose to come to Harvard Business School is the case method. I find the case method to be a very effective way in teaching general management. I enjoy walking into a classroom and thinking about the operational, financial, accounting, and ethical decisions facing the protagonist. I think that anyone who's applying to, to Harvard should really make sure that they know what the case method is because it's taught in virtually every class all the time. And you're learning through the actions of a protagonist in a, in a essentially a story about a business problem. And, um, and you're challenged to think like this person and solve that problem that he's facing. At the end of the day, you're going to learn a lot of the same types of knowledge at any of the schools. But because of the case method, it teaches you a bunch of other skills that you wouldn't necessarily get otherwise. Like, 
you know, you're in this room full of 90 people, which is very smart people, which is a little bit intimidating. Um, and you're required to raise your hand, um, be assertive, make your points, uh, be rational about it, um, respond to questions on the spot. Um, so it's, it's a skill that I really wanted to develop that I thought was something that's just useful for business and just life in general, um, which is very unique to HBS. You really get to know your classmates and learn from your classmates and it's real world experience. Um, it also just in terms of developing relationships with these people who are going to be your network, um, your very, very vital network over the next stage of your career, maybe throughout the rest of your career, uh, it really helps you get to know each other and makes it so that, you know, at the beginning a teacher's facilitating everything, as you get more experience you start talking to each other. It's also, especially if you have a business background as I did, it's good to just keep applying that knowledge to different examples and see how it pans out. I think at the beginning you start to look for right answers and then as you go along you start to figure out, well actually it's more about what, what factors should I consider because I could see there being multiple right answers here. Now 50% of the class of 2009 scored between a 700 and 740 on the GMAT. But even if you score below that, you can still get into Harvard Business School. We certainly have seen candidates, and many candidates, you know, not all candidates, but many candidates, get in over the years with scores that are, that are well under 600, you know, 550s, et cetera. And um, you, know, it, 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 you have to make up for, for your low score in many other ways. Um, you know, if, if you're a part of an overrepresented group and you look a lot like other candidates and you have a 550, the chances are not great. But if there's something distinct about you and special, you shouldn't be, you shouldn't be discouraged. So there are, there are a handful, there are very few, um, but they get in. And I, I don't think that there's, a, um, I don't think there's, there's a, a lucky number where you have to feel like your chances are shot if you get below, below this score. Next question for you is if an applicant could pick one thing to focus on, so say they're about to apply for round one or round two, that they um, should work on to impress Harvard Business School, whether it's their GMAT score to increase their volunteer hours um, or to really focus on building a relationship with one of their um, you know, recommenders, what would you suggest that thing be? What mm -hmm. do you think is something that that applicant needs to dial up for them to really make an impression to the admissions committee? I, I wish I could tell you there was one thing. I think that, I think that candidates, M MBA candidacies are shaped over in many ways over a lifetime and uh, and there isn't a, you know a secret recipe that someone can just do this one thing in the in the next you know three months or the last five months whatever it is um, and I, I think that candidates need to uh, need to really focus on themselves and identify what is interesting and different about themselves and then to and then communicate that through the to the admissions committee through their essays through their resume you know through their interviews etc and I, I don't think it's something where like I said where there's a, a recipe it's just more of a, of a general approach to the to the to, to an individual application that will make the difference for them the first thing I did was kind of map out all the different topics um, or the questions that the schools were asking and then start to brainstorm like lists of things that I could write about um, in each category and then look at the whole school's application together so if there are four essays look at you know the lists I had made for the four questions and pick out things that work together to make an application where I didn't keep talking about the same aspect of myself but maybe um, where I could pick out a couple different complementary stories to highlight different things so I would really recommend kind of mapping it all out first and and once you do that you kind of start writing and then there's also the whole writing and editing process and I got feedback from a lot of different people so that took a while but I think the hardest part was just figuring out what I wanted to talk about and that's where I would start early like even even months before just keep a little notebook where if you like remember an anecdote or a story you can kind of jot it down on a list of something that might be good. Make a grid of everything that the school considers important growing across the top and all the parts of your application going down the side and make sure that at some point or another in your application you know whether it's recommendation one two or three or your GMAT score or your your GPA or something like that um, one of your essays that you've checked off everything that the school considers to be important so that you can really show them that in every way possible you're a perfect fit you have everything that they're looking for um, and why you're a perfect fit for each other. Harvard doesn't ask you at least in its current application and, and its past few it doesn't really ask you why Harvard and I think they know that many people are quite excited about the opportunity to go to Harvard and graduate from Harvard and um, and I think that they're more looking for characteristics in you I don't think you need to pander to the school and tell them how great they are in order to get in I think you again really just need to stick with what makes you different and special and that will hopefully carry the day for you. Now I know it can seem daunting to you at this point in the application process but if you set your mind to it map it out 
and commit to the heavy lifting now, we hope to see you here on campus this time next year as a new admin. Well, that's it for this edition of MBA Pod TV. I'm your host, Mia Saini. Join us on mbapodcaster.com as well as on Facebook. And of course, you can follow us on Twitter to get all the insights you need to getting into your top business school. Thank you.